groundbreaking piece of mainstream artwork was released. What was groundbreaking about it was that it was intended to be the first release of an entire generation of releases. And each release throughout the many, many years would introduce new ideas, new themes, new flavors, new characters. And that first initial release did well, both critically and commercially. Although the critics did say that it was nothing outrageous, it wasn't anything amazing, but it was very, very good. Nobody took it too seriously and nobody could have seriously believed that this was going to be the seed that would flower an entire franchise that would go on for over a decade and change and define the industry that it came from, all from that one release in 2008. That first release in 2008 is one of the least talked about instances in this entire project, but it is looked at in reverence and respect for the thing that started it all. The artwork that I'm talking about, of course, is the 2008 motion picture Iron Man. What did you think I was talking about? Iron Man was a huge risk for Marvel. Although Iron Man comic books had done very well in the 1990s, it still wasn't seen as one of their more popular comic book characters like Captain America, the Incredible Hulk, and of course their most popular and iconic character, Spider-Man, who they could not make a film about because the film rights were locked in with Sony Pictures at that time. So they took a chance, not just with the Iron Man character, but also casting Robert Downey Jr who was most known in Hollywood for being in prison at that time than any of his acting credentials. Marvel made their own studio, put $140 million down and said, let's try and start a cinematic universe that will span for nearly a decade and a half, will go from strength to strength and culminate in its ultimate release. Now, funnily enough, there was something else that was released in 2008 that was based on a franchise that had done pretty well in the 1990s but wasn't as popular as other fragrances of its time. But still was given a lot of money and the task of starting an entire new line of fragrances that was hoping to span for nearly a decade and a half, go from strength to strength, and culminate in its ultimate release. But before we get to that, let's go back to the 1980s. I myself was born in 1992, but even I can tell you, from what I've heard, seen, and read, the 1980s were pretty fucking cool. The main thing that set the 1980s apart from any other decade is that there was a lot of money in it. People had much more of it. This was mainly to do with credit cards. Now, you know that there would be a couple of repercussions of that later on. But don't worry all about that right now, because with more money, there could be more risks taken in all forms of art. But as people became more vain and drawn to beauty, including men, male fragrances promoted as aftershaves were about to explode onto the scene in a way never seen before. As the 1990s started, a new wave of modern masculinity hit, and the theme, surprisingly, was balance. Mostly every single mainstream men's fragrance from that period was an extremely balanced composition. If you look at La Malle, L'Odyssee, Boss Bottled, Aqua de Gio, Chanel, Allure Homme, Jazz from YSL, and even CK1, Everything is pretty damn meticulous and on the fence. I think that this was when fragrance wasn't exactly seen as an art, but it was more a craft. Boss Bottled had crafted a balance between apple cinnamon and vanilla, making it a very wearable American pie. La Malle was a beautifully constructed lavender, mint and vanilla, and CK1 was a fantastic blend of citruses and florals to the highest of technicality. If you look at both CK1 and Aqua de Gio note breakdown, and you think about the tangibility of taking all these different aroma chemicals along with citrus aroma chemicals, blending them together and making sure that they were actually coherent, make sense and be mainstream, Alberto Morialis, who was responsible for both of these creations, wasn't just a perfumier in the 1990s, he was a quantum chemist. Alberto in the 90s was the Michael Jordan of fragrances. But the trend was clear, and Jean-Paul Gaultier put it best when he told Francis Kurdjian exactly the kind of scent that he wanted from Lamal. He said to him, make it clean. And in my mind, 
The 1990s was the neo-clean era of the industry. Fresh, citrusy, floral, balanced, sexy cleanliness, and this trend exploded and kept going. And the Crombie and Fitch is fierce, my beloved Tommy from Tommy Hilfiger, the 1990s was so cool, fun, colourful, sexy, and clean. But then, in 1996, suddenly there was this other fragrance that appeared on the market. A fragrance that was being constructed by a relative nobody in the fragrance world. A fragrance that had notes of coffee, caramel, patchouli, tonka bean, honey, and even tar? What, like tar? Like, like the shit they put on the road? Um, no thanks. This is the 1990s and we love our neo-clean happiness. You go and smell like a new road with vanilla ice cream and coffee spilled all over yourself over there. We're gonna stay over here happy, clean and cool, right guys? <laughs> About four years earlier, in 1992, Terry Mugler released their first ever fragrance called Angel. And I won't really be spending too much time on Angel as it could deserve its own separate video all of its own. It made a splash for both women's perfumes, but also for men. Angel was so popular and such a striking scent that could indeed walk the line between female and maybe even masculine, that in 1994, the house of Animal released a fragrance called Animal Animal. And it was marketed at men, but it was a clone of Terry Mugler's Angel for Women. Patients, but the president of the company said, no, 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 we, yeah, we'll do it. Animal, animal for men, and uh, at the time, uh, the original Angel for Women had launched about two years, two years earlier. Prior, yeah. And uh, much of you'd be surprised how much back and forth uh, you have between men's and women's fragrances. So basically, Aramis for men is basically an interpretation of Cabochon, and you know fragrances do go back and forth, and and even more so today, in the higher end niche, you have fragrances that are worn. Either way, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter if it's not uncommon. So with subtle tweaks and twists, you can take a, um, a women's fragrance and make it into a men's. This was a common practice in the 1990s when cloning did exist, but not at the level of debauchery that it is now. But Animal, Animal was a huge hit. It still is even to this day. So I don't know if what I'm about to tell you is true, but if I was Moogler, and I saw that a men's variation of my female fragrance is making a lot of money, I'd kind of want in on the action. What's even crazier is, just look at the 1994 Animal Animal bottle, and then take a look at this that was released two years later. This was Angel Men. And it wasn't simply just a female version of Angel, no. It was something more. Many agree, some disagree, but many Perfumier, reviewers, and industry professionals agree that it wasn't just one of the best gourmands ever made, but it was the first ever gourmand fragrance that was ever made. Gourmand in the idea that it was attempting to smell like something edible, like a dessert. Yes, vanilla had been used in previous fragrances, but not in the same way as this. Angel Men was the first ever true gourmand that was ever released onto the market. For men, that is. What was the first ever gourmand, I hear you ask? Well, you can guess, can't you? It was Angel. Let's really just stop here for a moment and put that into some perspective, shall we? The first modern perfume made of scented oils blended in an alcohol solution was made in 1370. That's 653 years ago at the time of this video being released. Angel was released in 1992, the same year that I was born, making it and I, 31 years old. That means that fragrance was over six centuries old before it made its first ever legitimate, recognized gourmand. If you were born in 1992 or earlier, you were literally alive to witness fragrance history. You walk into a fragrance store now, and what do you see? Gourmands, they're everywhere. Gourmands, interestingly, have taken more of a market share in women's designers but the gourmand genre really took off and was able to find its home in the world of niche. Many niche and independent perfumes found their feet and their unique sales points via taking the smells of sweets and candies and coffees, teas, ice creams, 
An entire exploding genre that is one of my favorite genres of all time was invented in my lifetime. Researching the Angel Men series was one of the most challenging endeavors I've ever had on this channel. When you type in A Star Men by Terry Mugler on Google, sometimes only four pages of search results turn up, sometimes only 11, which is very strange. Most of them are sales websites, online retailers, now with harsh criticism for the current formulation of Angel Men. It is as if Angel Men has been all but erased since the takeover by L'Oreal. You see, I heard many years ago that Angel Men was inspired by Terry Mugler's desire to make a smell of a fairground. Candy floss, chocolates, maybe even the oils from the rides into one succinct scent. And you know what, when I heard that, something just seemed off about it. It made sense, in a way. It explained uh, the smell, the cotton candy kind of thing, and maybe it isn't Angel Men that was inspired by that. Maybe it was Angel, because Angel does, after all, have the cotton candy note. But for Angel Men, no, I felt there was something missing. Not a lot of the stories I'd heard made sense. That is until you see this image. You see, when Terry Mugler was just a lad, he didn't want to be a fashion designer. He wanted to be a superhero. I can relate. I think many of us, when we were younger, wanted to be Spider-Man or Batman or Superman, and that desire only increased since 2008, when both The Dark Knight and Iron Man were released respectively. My generation, and especially Generation Z, have been saturated with the imagery in film and television adaptations. But that's all that they are, adaptations of comic books, and Moogler adored the original comic books, and his favorite superhero of all time was the Silver Surfer. When you realize this, you can start to see in Moogler's fashion the superhero influence. Bombastic, larger-than-life characters. There's also a clear science fiction and astronomy influence. Many of his collections are named after planets and different solar objects and iconography of the Silver Surfer is almost everywhere to be seen. Another one of his favorite superheroes? Well, you may have already guessed. Warren Worthington III was born in Centerport, New York to extremely wealthy parents. His parents enrolled him in various boarding schools such as the Fairburns Boys School, the Phillips Academy and the East Coast Boarding School where he finally befriended Cameron Hodge after defending him from a bully. During this time he started to feel a weird pain in his back and then he felt as though something was sprouting from his shoulder blades. And as things started to develop, he started to realize that something was growing on his back. And those things were wings that he hid from both his parents and other students. However, over time, Warren realized that he could use his power to help people. And when a fire started in his dormitory, he used costumes from the trauma department to save people inside as an angel. The aesthetic of Silver Surfer and the name of Angel were combined to make Angel Men. Fragrance fit for a superhero. Angel Men was born and became arguably the greatest fragrance line of all time. Some of you who are younger and who may not know too much about this series may think that Angel Men Pure Coffee was the first ever flanked to the original Angel Men. But actually, it wasn't. Far from it. Before the golden age of the Angel Men series, there was a little prelude, a, a prologue, if you will. You see, Terry Mugler's original vision of his cinematic universe was in a very different direction. It started with the sequel to Amen, B-Men, in 2004. And, um, I'm not joking, in Mugler's mind, B-Men wasn't just a name and flanker, it was a new superhero. With Amen being a riff on the Silver Surfer, B-Men was this alien creature more in line with the uh, Green Lantern comic books. And he wanted this so much that Mugler even released a comic book called Terra Elastica, in which both heroes, A-Men and B-Men, worked together on the incredible adventure to fight off... Oh, there wasn't a storyline, it was just... it was just... promotional. B-Men, with its green rubber and red star, the same colour scheme as the alien hero, 
portrayed in the comic book, is heralded as a cult classic made by both Jacques Husler, the man behind the original scent, aided by Christine Nagal, who went on to be the in-house perfumier of Hermes, a solid companion piece to the Amen fragrance. I bought this for my dad, and I think he still has it somewhere. It felt like this warm, sweet lavender smell. I looked on for Grand Tequila and Base Notes and the official website and found amazingly that there is no lavender, and what I may have been getting was actually licorice. B-Men is loved by some people, but I felt it was one of the weaker entries. It didn't have, if you pardon the pun, the star power. B-Men was discontinued a few years after its release, although it's a little bit difficult to know what year that was, as when you thought it was gone, it would suddenly reappear in discounters and online retailers. Why was it discontinued? There's many factors, but interestingly, the name itself may have been an issue. B-Men may have signalled subconsciously to some that this was, well, second best. It wasn't the top tier stuff. B isn't A, and some consumers may have interpreted that in a literal sense. There are so many other letters in the alphabet to play with. For example, the arch nemesis of the pure and holiness that was the angel man, the D man. A fiery chili based fragrance that had notes of chili. Oh, right, they actually did that one. We'll, we'll get back to that. Okay, it had notes of coal, sulfur, coffee, and evil. Now, that is a comic book idea. The Kingdom of the Angel Men fight valiantly against the devil's favourite demons in a biblical battle for the senses and specifically for the sense of smell. It was either that or seamen. And, well, I mean, I mean, technically that's already been done, but um, yeah, so that was B Men. Overall, I'd give it a 6 out of 10 but we aren't a pure coffee yet. This prologue era isn't over. We still have one of the most fascinating releases of the Moogler franchises ever, and one of the very few, sadly, that I've actually never smelt. So this is where things get a tiny bit complicated. And trust me, some of this Moogler story is a bit needlessly complicated. But it goes something like this. Summer editions in the 1990s, and especially in the 2000s, were all the rage, and big money makers for companies. Any designer company that wasn't making a summer edition felt like that they were being left out. Some houses compromised and made a sport edition to appeal to the hot summer-loving audiences, and Moogler created Angel Men Summer Fresh, which was the official summer edition to Angel Men. And it must have done really well because they decided to discontinue it as a limited edition summer flanker and make it a permanent mainstay as Ice Man. Now, I never saw this in stores in the northwest of England when I was working there in fragrance. I could never get my hands on it and it was never really available on eBay or Amazon. I have never actually smelt this perfume. I did search for it for eBay recently and found it, of course, for hundreds and hundreds of pounds, but then I found a Cuba clone for it, still in stock for seven pounds. And why not? Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Cuba Prestige Platinum. And you can just tell by the juice color that this is obviously trying to be Iceman. Now, like I said, I've never actually tried Ace, uh, Iceman before, so I, I don't know what's happening but I felt as though I had to um, I had to do this to sort of get a bit of completion so here we go um, I can barely smell this thing it's very very weak very very um, that is a skin scent immediately I doesn't really I don't know if this is still maybe they've changed it or something and it's now no longer an Iceman clone but they still market it or something. But that's not really I don't think that that's the Moogler DNA, but again I don't know. Um it smells as if like it smells as though Terry Moogler decided to release a blue fragrance. Like they tried to release a blue Angel Man fragrance. Blue Angel Blue Angel sounds like a uh, like a Viagra brand. But, yeah, it's like a Blue Angel Man. It's okay. I'd wear it. 
Actually, yeah, I do like that. It is like, it's something, it, it, it's as if it's very current and mainstream. It doesn't smell like it was something that was released in 2007, if that's what this is, you know, if this is an accurate depiction. But it smells like, it's nearly like a blue fragrance, but there is something about it. If somebody actually does have a, um, a sample of Iceman that they want to send me, I'd be very, very intrigued. But as far as this goes, it's not terrible. In fact, I actually quite like it. In fact, I think I could actually see myself wearing this in the summer. Um, but I can already tell that, you know, it's nice, it's pleasant. It's a bit soapy, a bit of that sort of dark and depth, but it, it's like it's like Bleu de Chanel with like a, a bit of peppering of the Angel Men DNA over it. And hey, if that was Iceman back in the day, it was way ahead of its time. But I have my doubts. Overall, I'd actually give that a 7 out of 10, but actually thinking about longevity, we'll stick with a 6. That was Iceman. The note of coffee is a note that I am very happy to say is never overused. Fragrance notes can be like a gold rush. There's been a Tonka rush, an Ambroxan rush, and an Oud Empire, but there has never really been a coffee rush. That note has remained special, primarily because the idea of smelling like coffee is not a mainstream idea. People enjoy coffee, of course, in fact, more than marijuana, cocaine, and even alcohol, the most popular drug in the world is actually caffeine. But tasting it and smelling like it is a different experience. Coffee itself has a huge variety of smells and tastes, whether it be the bean or the way that it's roasted or the way that it's used with milk and cream. Angel Men Pure Coffee is a black coffee, and it is yet perhaps the most similar to the original Angel Men, to the point where some people feel as though it was almost a redundant release. I actually felt as though it was softer and the tar element was reduced, and in its place was a heightened floral patchouli note. Some people have said it's more wearable than Angel Men, others say it's a lot harsher and not as easy to wear, but I think it was more wearable and more straightforward rather than just the original coffee note in Angel Men. I enjoyed this and I really thought that the coffee note was used very, very well in this. It was not, of course, the first ever fragrance to use coffee. There had been a decent line of hits, most notably Bond No. 9's New Harlem, Rochester by Rochester Man, and Michael Jordan's Legend all the way back in the 1990s. First released in 2008, Jack Huesler was brought back over 10 years later to work on the first ever flanker of this line. There are some reports online that Christine Nagal worked on this fragrance, but that's never really been confirmed. Overall out of 10, I'd give Pure Coffee an eight out of 10. Pure Coffee was a good start to this brand new line, but the next fragrance would take Mugler to the stratosphere. It would create and define an entire new genre of fragrance and continuing on a theme would be based on one of the most famous liquid drugs in the world. And it just happens to be a liquid drug I'm quite fond of. Pure malt actually got me into whiskey drinking. Well, a lot of factors did, a lot of different factors got me into whiskey drinking. Existential crisis, lots of stuff. This whiskey is Lag, by the way. If any of you like Laphroaig or PT whiskies or anything like that, then try out Lag by Aaron. This is not sponsored, I wish I was. I should be earning a lot of fucking money for this plug, to be honest. This is a delicious whiskey. It's the best whiskey I've tried. I went to the um, Dram Good Whiskey Festival a couple weeks ago. Absolutely delicious. Whiskey is, of course, associated with Scotland, and as a teenager and in my early 20s, I had mixed feelings about my Scottish heritage. I didn't know whether I liked being Scottish or, or not, but seeing as I'm drinking this whiskey out here in the middle of Edinburgh, where I live, I think I came to terms with it very quickly. I'll tell you a funny story about Pure Malt. Have you ever heard the original marketing for Pure Malt when it first came out? Absolute bullshit, absolute nonsense, right? Chris, when I come... In fact, me and Chris should actually be watching this on the 8th. If this has been released on the 8th of September, we're both watching this on his big screen, uh, sipping this. Anyway, here's the story of how Pure Malt came to be, apparently. Apparently, they took the original Angel Men all the way back from 1996, and they put it in a whiskey barrel for, I think, like 10 years. <laughs> they put This is what they actually said. This is not even a lie. So they put it in a whiskey barrel 
classic whiskey barrel, 10 years. They come back to it 10 years later and bam, the blue angel men liquid has turned into a golden <laughs> brown whiskey laden juice and it's completely changed all of its notes. And I just don't think that that happened, but it's a fun idea. It's a fun little fantasy. But yes, Angel Men did a lot for me, and it did also a lot for the fragrance industry. Slangiva. Last year for my birthday, Chris from Fragmental and Corey, Killer Frags, went to a whiskey tasting with the sole purpose of trying to pair off popular whiskey fragrances with actual whiskey. Some of them were easy, some of them were a bit of a challenge, but we got there. But I think the hardest fragrance to pair with an actual whiskey that day was pure malt. You see, whiskey is not a genre of drink, rather a full institution with different genres and subgenres. For example, usually anything from the island of Isla is a peaty, smoky whiskey, which pure malt isn't. Pure malt, if anything, is closest to a fruity light space side with a bit of smoke. The bottle was perfect. A clean rubber outer edge and the warm brown glow expect from a Highland single malt style whiskey. In fact, the juice color is probably most similar to Highland Park 18, which is probably my favorite whiskey ever. Cheers, Chris, for uh, getting that for my birthday. You know, my birthday's coming up again. I just, I mean, w um, it, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be Highland Park 18 again. I'm just, you know what I mean? But if you want to help me buy whiskey, I mean, um, improve my channel. No, I mean seriously. If you want to help me buy whiskey, then I do have a PayPal, which is info at thefragranceprice.co.uk. Amazingly, Pure Malt is actually the first male fragrance to ever use the note of whiskey. Is exactly what I thought until I saw <laughs> that <laughs> there was another fragrance that used the note of whiskey beforehand in 2004. <laughs> um... <laughs> it's called Coming by Alan C Maybe this was Seamen all along. And this fragrance is just, um, it's worth it solely for this Fragrantica review. Today I felt like coming. My girlfriend told me she would like to try coming, and I agreed to keep coming on her for the rest of the day. She kind of liked this. <laughs> Of coming takes a certain mood to keep up with, but I pulled it off today just fine. And every month, <laughs> loved the way <laughs> everybody around me loved the way coming pushed out of me into the happiest I've never tried. But whether you were coming or going, I think we can all agree that Angel Men Pure Malt refined and defined the whiskey sensation, a fragrance that we are all thankfully in today. If you want to see my thoughts on Angel Men Pure Malt, I reviewed it here, but it goes without saying that for me, this warming glow of whiskey and the Angel Men DNA is perfect and it's a 10 out of 10. I'm uncertain if it's a coincidence. But coffee and then whiskey, or rather alcohol in general, are the first and second most used drugs in the world. The third is unfortunately still tobacco, despite the overwhelming evidence that it can create cancer and heart disease in many. But there was a rhythm to this. Pure coffee, coffee, pure malt, alcohol, and then pure Havan, tobacco. Maybe Terry Mugler pitched pure heroin, pure cocaine, Pure pharmaceutical drug side effects may include nausea, diarrhea, rash, yeast infection, fever, weight gain, insomnia, nervousness, drowsiness, insomnia, weakness, and nervousness, sweating, nausea, vomiting, nosebleed, nasal irritation, nausea, heartburn, fatigue, dizziness, dizziness, drowsiness, chest pains, loss of appetite, leg, leg pain, chest plus thing, uh, uh, death, swelling, numbness, minor infection, mild allergic or other reaction, redness. Please go to your doctor before trying Angel Men Pure Pharmaceutical Drug. Now, tobacco has been used as fragrance for almost as long as it was first discovered by the Europeans when they colonized America. Tobacco absolute in its pure form is extremely repulsive, but when diluted, it can create a huge array of smells. Anything from the classic pipe tobacco that we all know, all the way to leathers, chocolate, sweets, hay, tea, honey, and everything in between. So tobacco has always had its share in fragrance history, but after Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille was released, all bets were off, and the industry started making mainstream tobacco scents like there was no tomorrow. 
Now, what's interesting here is that at this point, Moogla had a choice with its Angelman series. Do we stay being proactive in setting trends or do we get reactive with current already established trends? Iceman was a reaction to the summer editions and Pure Havan may have been a reaction to the storm of tobacco fragrances being released at that time. However, it is also interesting to note, they never made a pure oud, which would have made them a lot of money. It felt as though there was a constant toing and throwing with regards to them setting trends or riding trends. Either way, they hit the bullseye every time, and in Fragrance, in 2011, they hit that bullseye maybe harder than ever. Even now, anyone with a passing knowledge of the Angel Men series, look to these two, Pure Malt and Pure Havan. There have been posts and posts online about which one is better. You could even make the argument that some people now know these two far better than even the original. If I can be frank, they are both awesome, but for different reasons. The tobacco and cherry combination is so warming and inviting, mixed in with some deep, sweet honey, vanilla, and a spark of patchouli. Jer from the Fragrance Bros said it best. Oh! It did and still does scream fall or autumn, which is the real word for that season. For many, when the autumn season hits, Pure Havan warms them up in a fluorescent tobacco and honey glow. For me, it's a straight 10 out of 10. So why did Pure Malt and Pure Havan get discontinued? Well, the thing is, they didn't. Except they did, except they didn't, except they did. This has been the situation with the two major stars of the Angel Men series, both Molten Havan, for as long as they were released. For now, you can find both of these iconic fragrances on eBay at prices usually well over the 100 mark. If any of the Terry Moogler Angel Men fragrances were to come back, it would most likely be these two. Remember when I said some of this story is weird? Well, this is one of those moments. So in 2011, the same year as Pure Havan being released, Terry Moogler announced that they were creating a Taste of Fragrance range, which used recipes from Michelin star French chef Helene de Rose. And not only were these fragrances available, but the recipes to make the fragrances were also available on the website. The concept of the series was to take fragrances from their most popular ranges and put food into it. With Alien, they used the food caramel. With Angel, they used pure cocoa. And with Angel Men, they used chili pepper. So this wasn't part of the Angel Men line. In fact, on the official Fragrantica page, this fragrance wasn't even listed with the other Angel Men's in the Angel Men series. It's listed as its own separate thing as part of the Taste fragrance line, even though it's an Angel Men fragrance. So whatever. The marketing was confusing and the reviews were extremely polarizing. Some saying that it didn't smell like a fragrance, but more like one big chili pepper. And as you could imagine, the general public didn't know what to make of it. Again, I never saw this one in stores or around the UK, so maybe it was just a limited release of France and the United States, I don't know. But I've never smelt this one and there are no clones, but that food recipe is still there. So for a special treat to all of you who are signed up to my Patreon, I am going to attempt to cook this Angel Men Terry Moogler recipe for my girlfriend at the end of the month. Those of you who have supported my Patreon have helped me slowly turn this into a full-time job and have really contributed to this video and many others that are coming like it. I really appreciate it. If you sign up to my Patreon, you will get exclusive behind the scenes footage, sneak peeks of videos, interviews, podcasts, all that good stuff. And also you'll get to see me try and cook this thing at the end of the month, um, which may or may not go very well. Pure Leather, in my opinion, was the closest to the original Angel Men, but damn did it stink. This was a pure animalic dream. I got two bottles of this at the time of its release because at this point, the Angel Men's were starting to become the annual event of the fragrance calendar, and you understood that once these things were gone, they were gone. Leather was incredibly deep and harsh. It was the original Angel Men, but without any joy whatsoever. If this was a superhero adventure, it was like a dark, gritty DC Universe film. The feeling of wearing this was the exact same experience of watching Man of Steel, but without the disappointment. It had the exact same color palette as the Zack Snyder produced DC movies. It was a brooding, dark variation of the original Angel Men, and it was fantastic. Leather had already been used ad nauseum at this point in fragrance, but this was clearly not 
the cleanly Tuscan leather smell. In fact, I think the comparison hurt Pure Leather because it wasn't just the same Tuscan leather smell. When I went to Essence this year, I smelled about 10 Tuscan leather clones. Guys, it's 2023. Tuscan Leather was released in 2007, it's nearly 16 years old, and yes it was great, but can we maybe make some new leather based fragrances now? Pure Leather didn't want to be and wasn't Tuscan Leather, it was a black, tar like soup of dark colours and burnt rubber. Speaking of which, the bottle was awesome, with its faux leather flacon. This was easily the darkest chapter of the Angel Men series. The only real irritation was that it was very linear, and quite close to the original. And that's why it can be seen as the most underrated of the line, but it was still a very strong addition. I'd give it a 9 out of 10. It probably made sense to tone things down after Pure Leather, which was the bleakest and darkest of the line, so they... Um, man, I mean, this is just... This is just the fucking... This is legitimately one of the craziest stories I've ever heard in this industry. In early 2012, Angel Men announced that they would be releasing a brand new fragrance, and the face of this fragrance would be Paralympic gold champion Oscar Pistorius. The fragrance, from what I can remember, was refreshing. Some say very similar to Ice Men. I don't... Uh, maybe, actually, smelling that clone, I, I could see that. There had never been a face of any of the Angel Men fragrances apart from the comic book superhero drawings. And you know what? This made sense that it was Oscar Pistorius, with many seeing him as a real-life superhero. He embraced it wholeheartedly and became a role model for all, a beacon of hope and light for all, a true inspiration to all human beings, and someone who would and should carry the Angel Men series to the promised land with his bravery and compassion and optimism. In the early morning of Thursday, the 14th of February, 2013, Oscar Pistorius shot and killed his then girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, at their home in Pretoria. Pistorius later admitted in court that he shot his girlfriend, Steenkamp, four times, causing her death, but claimed he mistook her for a possible intruder. He was sentenced to an inexplicably light four-year sentence for culpable homicide. It was a tragedy that hit South Africa, the sport of running, and most terribly, the family and loved ones of Reva Steenkamp. This was a tragedy that left one person dead and the other completely ruined. This was two years after Mugla announced that they were releasing a fragrance with Pistorius' likeness on it, and the name of that fragrance was Angel Men Pure Shot. No, I shit you not, Pure Shot. Why did they freaking call this thing Pure Shot? What, was it the starting whistle? I don't understand. There is no real reason. Like, they could have called it pure ambition, pure speed, pure fucking irony. Pure Shot was a very pleasant dance between the mainstay of patchouli in the Angel Men series, mixed with lighter notes of juniper berry, cardamom, and green accords. There was also mint listed, but to my nose, there was something freshing up everything, but I didn't exactly get the note of mint but it was a fresh, interesting take on the scent. I didn't like it when I first tried it. I have to admit, over the years, I have enjoyed it more. I actually got a sample of this recently because of the making of this video, and you know what? I think that this was a fine addition to the Angel Men line. I think everyone at this point, back in 2012, people wanted, you know, pure rose or pure vanilla or pure oud. So with that context, it's easy to see why it had a lukewarm reception. There were some fans of it, and I remember this actually selling pretty well in Selfridges because it was ironically one of the more user-friendly Angel Men's. So much so that it survived the Oscar Pistorius scandal although it just had to get rid of that unbelievably unfortunate name. Overall, a 7 out of 10. 2013 was what I call the cleanup year of the Moogle line. Pure Shot was discontinued the second that Oscar Pistorius came on the news, and was now replaced by Angel Men Pure Energy, that smelled exactly the same. Please don't think that these two fragrances were any different from each other, they were just the same, 
they just had to have their name changed, no reformulation, no notes changed, it was the same juice. Pure Malt had sort of been discontinued, but people absolutely loved it and wanted it, so they decided to recreate it, calling it Pure Malt Creation 2013. It was more intense with its fruits and whatnot, and definitely more straightforward than the original. 2013 also saw Pure Leather, B-Men and Pure Havan get silently discontinued to make way for the next chapter in this incredibly good smelling story. In 2014, Angel Men Pure Wood was released, and this is where we pretty much get hit after hit. And this era is where it felt like there were just endless possibilities for this line. People started asking for different new versions. I even asked for Pure Vanilla in one of my videos, but Pure Vanilla, that's just so plain. We could have had anything. Pure Vetiver, Pure Almond, Pure Red Leicester Cheese. Hell, why limit it to notes? What about vibes and environments? Pure love, pure guilt, pure meadow, pure flower factory, pure weather spoons with the boys for a couple points after the match. Endless possibilities. Havan and Malt would always be the breakout stars of this line, but hey, Pure Wood and the others that we are about to look at were all big hits and fan favorites as well. Now, Pure Wood was an interesting choice. Wood is an incredibly vague term, as there are all sorts of wood in perfumery, most commonly sandalwood and cedarwood, but the listing on Pure Wood here was oak. But honestly, to me, it didn't really smell of oak. It smelled like the plasticky D-squared he wood fragrances. It's not exactly a bad thing. This wood accord was like a white wood and was very easy on the nose. I didn't hate it, it was a lighter version of the Moogle line, and it did have a freshness to it that didn't jeopardize the structure of the patchouli, coffee and tar notes. This was an incredibly wearable variation of the Moogle series, yet unlike the other fresh fragrances like Iceman and Pure Shot slash Energy, this still felt like an angel man. Some people say that this was their favorite from the whole line. Others really didn't like it. It was certainly polarizing to some, and although this was not my favorite, I really thought it was a great addition to the line. I'd give it an eight out of 10. Speaking of favorites, I may surprise some of you with this next one. As you can see, there were a lot of Angel Men fragrances. In fact, in general, the amount of fragrances that are out there can be overwhelming. If you feel as though you're at a point in your fragrance journey where you don't really know where to go, or you feel as though you've smelled everything and you want to try something new, then I'm happy to tell you that the one-to-one -one fragrance consultations have returned. As far as I know, I'm the only fragrance reviewer doing this at the moment. For $85, you can have a 45-minute one-to-one Zoom consultation with me, in which we will go through your fragrance journey, we'll see what you like, I'll try and discover your taste for you, I will tell you what I think that you like and what you most likely don't like and which path to go down. You can get one session for $85, but if you want to do bulk sessions with me, if you want to do one session, I give you some fragrance advice and then you come back and we continue, you can now book three sessions with me for $200. You will have to email me at info at thefragranceapprentice.co.uk with the subject matter bulk consultations, but if you just want to do a one-time only fragrance consultation, there is a link in the description where you can go onto my calendar page and you can literally book right now. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you and helping you throughout your fragrance consultation. We go through a whole timeline of where you've been in your fragrance journey, where you want to go now, and seeing as I'm pretty much buying every single new designer fragrance that's out right now, if you don't have the ability to smell fragrances like like Lamal Elixir or One Million Royale, I can tell you what they smell like, and not just that, but I can tell you whether I think it's going to suit you or not. Lots to talk about, can't wait to see you. See you then, book now. It makes sense that Pure Malt would be my favorite of this line, but I think if I was to say hand on heart, which was my all time favorite Terry Mugler Angel Men fragrance, it would not be Pure Malt. Or let's say that I feel that when my Pure Malt bottle runs out. I will be very sad, but I feel like I had a really good run with it. But when my Ultra Zest bottle runs out, I will be heartbroken. I'm even eyeing up the Duo Clone or Ultra Red Man as a replacement, but how do you really replace the irreplaceable? When the bottle design was released, the amount of doubt and dissension was palpable. The bottle looked like the original Angel Men bottle had had a really bad spray tan. And then on the announcement that the note of orange would be taking center stage, no one could take this seriously. But the amount of doubt and intrigue fueled this fragrance's anti-hype to the moon. I wasn't gonna buy a bottle because like many others, I thought this was ridiculous. And on my first day of the second year of film school, I had a sample in my hand, sprayed it on, and well. Remember when Pure Malt created an entire subgenre of new alcohol-based fragrances? Well, may I ask, why the fuck 
didn't this create a whole new subgenre of orange patchouli and vanilla fragrances? Because goddamn, this thing was utterly delicious. This was simultaneously citrusy and refreshing, yet cozy and warming. It was an incredible fragrance paradox that nobody was prepared for. And to tell you the truth, still one of the most unique fragrances released using orange ever. Orange and vanilla does have a complementary history. Hermes have done quite a few, but orange and vanilla can smell like an orange cheesecake that doesn't quite work on my nose. But with the added warming elements of the Angel Men DNA, this smelt like a Fanta float. I also appreciated the change from pure to ultra. It worked so well and gave this fragrance much more energy. This is really what pure energy should have been. I had all the fun wearing this fragrance. I have never tried Dewar's Zest or Ultra Red Man, but I guess that as my bottle from 2015 runs out, I will have to begrudgingly give it a go. Pure Tonka was an interesting back to the roots type of fragrance for the line. When it was released, it was immediately compared to Rocious Man and Bond No. 9's New Harlem. Now, on the surface, this is another rare example of Moogler reacting to trends. Tonka was starting to be everywhere in fragrances, but there's a little bit of irony with regards to the Tonka bean and the fact that this was the main note of most designers and some fantastic niches with such classics as Tonka Imperial and Dior's Feb Delicious. Now, what do you think was the first ever men's fragrance to use Tonka Bean. Oh, come on, it's obvious by now, isn't it? It's the original Angel Men. So Pure Tonka was, I don't know, maybe I'm reading into this a little bit too much, but it felt like Moogler was saying, hey, don't forget we are the guys who were ahead of the curb by 15 years. In fact, we brought Tonka into perfumery. Pure Tonka felt like a celebration of the gourmand genre in general. It was, in fact, the 20th anniversary of the release of the original Angel Men. Pure Tonka used the classic coffee and lavender combination that the industry had had success stories with before. It also had this chocolatey vanilla tinge that we had seen in many different great sweet niche vanilla gourmands and the pleasant gravelly, slightly synthetic vanillic Tonka bean smell that was prevailing in most mainstream designers. I have talked about it so many times. I think this is very wearable, even though there's a lot going on. If this was accidentally the 20th anniversary celebration of the Angel Men series, then it was a perfect way to celebrate a 10 out of 10 fragrance. Mint is notoriously difficult to work with in fragrance and notoriously terrible when it comes to the market as a main note. Yes, Lamal is a massive exception, but in many cases, it is the exceptions that maintains the rules. In general, customers just don't respond to mint. There's a couple of reasons that we can speculate on this. The biggest consumer product that is bought in mass that has mint as its main ingredient is toothpaste. Mint isn't seen as sexy or fresh. It's seen more as almost in the category of medicinal. There's mint in sweets like chocolate mint or as garnish over desserts. But when it comes to smelling clean and fresh, citruses, aldehydes, and even lavender trump mint every time. So when Cryptomint was announced, well, there was skepticism, of course, but hell, they pulled it off with Ultra Zest, so why the fuck not? Cryptomint was a very similar mood and vibe to Ultra Zest. You could put these two in their own category, away from the darker and harsher siblings like leather and malt. But all the same, it still had that fantastic patchouli Angel Men DNA. The blending on this was top tier, and I think the decision was made to blunt the edge of the mint with the patchouli and chocolate with lashings of tonka bean to give it a refreshing minty vibe where you could experience the cooling fresh vibe but not feel as though you've just smothered Colgate all over yourself. The dry down was this crazy paradox of both cooling minty elements and also very warming vanilla and cacao. Crypto Mint is one of the most underrated technical masterclasses that Moogler delivered to us. And although I do prefer Ultra Zest overall, Crypto Mint was most certainly in the same league. Also shout outs to the name Crypto Mint being similar to Krypton, the planet where Superman came from. Maybe a small nod to the comic book origins of the series. My only issue was projection and longevity. This thing surprisingly did not project out as much as I was expecting. So with this small criticism in place, I'll give it a nine out of 10. In the year of 2018, I was done with fragrances for many different reasons. I was very surprised when I saw that I'd even uploaded four videos that year. However, I did notice near the end of 2018 the absence of a new Moogler fragrance. In 2019, the announcement that Angel Men Ultimate was being released sounded interesting and different, 
but I find it just a little bit wishy-washy in terms of um, the name and what the name means. What did ultimate mean? You see, there are two very different definitions of ultimate. The first one is being the best or most extreme example of its kind. And this most certainly was not the best or most extreme example of the Angel Men series when compared to what had come before. But then there's a second definition, being or happening at the end of a process, final. I got a sample of it and it was just fine. Absolutely fine. Nothing interesting, just fine. Okay, acceptable, serviceable, insubstantial, and dare I say, downright mediocre. And I thought to myself, wait, what? What's happened? I never bought Angel Men Ultimate because I felt as though once I unwrapped it, and opened the box and sprayed the bottle, it was over. The story was well and truly over. When I look back at my 20s and the peak of my fragrance journey, I see the Angel Men series. It was just something else, a yearly tradition of a new fragrance of which the hype would always be massive and usually always met. I cannot stress that to keep something fresh, special, and interesting consistently for nearly 10 years is just incredible. The journey was over, but we'd done it. And well, at least we now have all these great fragrances to enjoy, you know, they enjoy the memories and, you know, for new collectors to enjoy because sure, even though the Angel Men line ultimately ended, we have all of the Angel Men fragrances to buy at any time that we want so that we can enjoy them again and again and again and again. Following consultation with employee representatives and both parties, L'Oreal and Clarence Brands. Group signed an agreement group the sale of new sales amounting to 20 million euros and a billion euros by L'Oreal and Clarence Group signed an agreement group sale of new sales amounting to 20 million euros and a billion euros by L'Oreal and Clarence Group signed an agreement group sale of new sales amounting to 20 million euros and a billion euros by L'Oreal and Clarence Group signed an agreement group sale of new sales You liars. You freaking liars. Oh, we're L'Oreal. We respect, we, you know, we respect the long tradition and we've had a long standing tradition of, of keeping cosmetics good and, you know, revving up prices and all that shit. You didn't give a fuck about Moogla. You didn't give a shit about the fact that they had created one of the greatest fragrance lines of all time, in decades. They created their own freaking genre within a genre, the alcohol boom in fragrance. And you didn't give a shit. You took everything away. That was the most bureaucratic bullshit I'd ever read. It's like an AI wrote that freaking letter. Oh yeah, we're L'Oreal. We stand for shit. We respect things. You didn't respect a man's legacy. You didn't respect a man's childhood dream. It's sometimes, you know, one time I, I once heard from somebody. Be careful what you get good at. It's a really interesting phrase that because, I mean, look at me. I wanted to be a filmmaker. In the end, I became a fragrance YouTuber and I've loved it. Sometimes I've hated it. Sometimes I felt as though maybe I should have done a bit more, you know, with the, with the film stuff, but I'm finally getting there. But you know what? I've managed to incorporate the film stuff with the fragrance stuff, and it's really, really worked well. Terry Mugler got good at fashion, and he was a good fashion designer. And he, when it came to fragrances, he was the best. He was the boss. And so what he did was he took superheroes, he took his love, he took his passion, he integrated that shit, and he made the Terry Mugler Angel Men line. Way to piss on somebody's fucking childhood dream. Way to completely disrespect everything and every single consumer who bought into it. What, do you not like money or something? 
Is that your problem? Angel Men Pure Malt, one of the trend-setting fragrances of the past 10 years, created its own subgenre. Gone. Pure Havan. I mean, freaking taking away Pure Havan? Are you nuts? Pure Tonka, Pure Coffee, Pure Energy. These things were not more than just fragrances. These were whole fucking characters that you just erased from existence. Money and passion and ability and skill set that went into them, gone. And then the ultimate insult. You take the original Angel Men. Just wore it down, treat it with no respect, treat it with nothing. The first ever Gourmand fragrance ever. And you treat it like it's just that freaking Cuba fragrance over there. You insulted the fans, you insulted the fragrance industry, you insulted perfumery, and you insulted the fucking man who started it all. I didn't have all of them, but I tried most of them. They were just great. And I'll be sadly missed. When I first smelt this, I think that I really didn't like it because of the fact that it, it, it signified the end. People felt that it was a flat ending to what was an incredible series. The ending of the Angel Men series by Terry Mugler upsets me not just because it was incredible and it was such a ride every single year, but what upsets me is I feel as though there are still so many stories to tell and it's the potential of what could have happened next. This sucks. Classic Angel Man. Rubbish sprayer. You know what? That's not as bad as I remember it being. Was this the ultimate Angel Man? I still don't think so. It is better than I remember it being, honestly. But was this the last Angel Man? For now, at least. Yes. So to Jacques Huslier, to Christine Nagal, and finally to the superhero, Terry. Here's to you, buddy. Thanks for some incredible fragrances and some wonderful memories. Rest in power. On the 23rd of January, 2022, Terry Mugler died. Not the fashion house or the fragrance brand, but the man himself. Terry Mugler, by the end of his life, seemed upset and almost bitter against the company that he had created. You could see at that point Mueller's face was severely altered after multiple vehicle accidents, including a motorcycle accident. He took each opportunity to make his face look tougher and more heroic. He asked the surgeons to beef up his appearance and make him look stronger. He once talked about how he looked in this incredibly defiant interview in which he said, I wanted my face to represent progress because after years of being a thin, charming dancer, I wanted to be a warrior. I've done so much in my life. I've fought so much. I'm a superhero. So it's normal to have the face of one. Terry Mugler adored and loved superheroes. And although the original vision of the cinematic universe of Angel Men didn't quite work out, what it turned out to be was more consistent, beloved and achieved heights of which the industry didn't even know was possible. I find it poetic that Angel Men Ultimate came out the same year that Avengers Endgame did. 
both massive franchises starting humbly in 2008 and then coming to their ultimate end in 2019. But who said it was over? We've seen again and again our favorite superheroes be recreated, reimagined, and rebooted. And maybe one day L'Oreal will realize just what they lost when they took away the Angel Men franchise from us. And who knows, maybe the Angel Men series itself might get a reboot. Maybe one day we can re-enjoy those favorites. Maybe one day this incredible line will get the justice that it deserved. And who knows, maybe one day the Angel Men will return and save us all.